Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail Roots Learning Series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Freeware Northern Lines route, which is available from Vulcan Productions, and models the route between Blackpool North and Preston, as it was about three or four years ago, before electrification took place, as this route today is now electrified with the 25 kilovolts AC overhead electrification system. I'm going to be driving a full run of this route between Blackpool North and Preston in train 1 Bravo 27, which is the 1511 Northern Rail departure from Blackpool North running through to York. The total journey distance between here and Preston is just over 17 and a half miles, and our stops along the way include Poulton Le Fylde and Preston. Our traction on this journey is a class 158 diesel multiple unit, which is part of the Sprinter family of units known as an Express Sprinter. The class 158s have been in service since the 17th of September 1990 and were constructed between 1989 and 1992 by British Rail Engineering Limited at Derby Lit Church Lane Works. A total of 170 class 158 units were produced, formed of two or three coaches per train set. The weight of each unit is 37.8 metric tons and they have one diesel engine per car which is rated at 350 horsepower. These units have a maximum speed of 90 miles per hour, though on this journey today the maximum speed that we're going to be able to get up to is 75 miles per hour. Once in the cab of this unit, there's just a few things I'm going to do now to set up ready for departure. The setup procedure is actually very similar to most other British Rail uh, diesel multiple units, and indeed it's pretty much the same as the Class 150, which featured in my previous uh, route learning video. So first of all I need to press Shift and W to turn on the master key, and now that I've done that, I need to move the reversing handle into the neutral position and reset the AWS self-test sequence. Next thing I'm going to do is turn on the instrument lights. As I can see that the signal ahead is clear, I'm going to turn off the driver reminder appliance. Now we need to set up the headlights, so if I just press H once, then that's, that sets up the uh, daytime headlights and also the marker lights. I'm going to turn the tail lights now just by flicking the tail light switch there, so that they're off at the front of the train. So just to quickly go through the controls here, we've got a standard West Code three-step brake on the left-hand side of the cab, so you've got uh, the release position, steps one, two, uh, step three, which is full service, and then the fourth step, which is emergency. And just above that, we've got the standard British Rail brake gauge there, with the needle on the right being the brake cylinder pressure, indicating how hard the brakes are applied. So I've just reduced the braking there, and you can see that the needle's falling, and when the needle points at zero, then the brakes are fully released. Just to the right of that, we've got the speedometer measured in miles per hour, which is a very, very easy to read speedometer on this particular unit. And just below that, we've got the horn control, which is a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key. Continuing to the right of the cab here, we've now got the throttle control there, which has seven notches of power. And generally when I start the train moving, I'll go up to notch three just to get the train moving. Then when we're doing around five miles an hour or so, I'll step up to notch five. And then finally up to full power once we're doing 10 to 15 miles per hour. The next thing I'm going to do now is just open the window because I prefer the sound of the train with the window open. You can much more clearly hear the engine. You can also hear the noise of the air rushing past. Now I'm going to quickly set up the GSM radio system here. So I need to press the data entry key which is at the top right. And now I need to enter the train's head code which is 1 Bravo 27. So if I click on the 1 and then for B I need to click 2 twice. Now wait until it wants the next key, and now I can press 2 and 7. And then normally you'd enter the signal number here, but there is no signal number at the end of the platform that I could see. So I'm just going to type in a random signal number, 001, and then tick that. So the train is now registering on the GSM system. 
The final thing that I need to do in the cab to set up is now the destination code. So if we go up to the destination code display here, if I click on the C to clear the display, I now need to enter the code number for the train's destination, which as I've already mentioned is York. So the code for York is 148. So if I just click on 14 and 8, now click on E. We've now entered the data, and as you can see there, it says York on that display. And if we were to look at the outside of the train, which we will do in a minute, then you'll also see that York is now on the destination display on the outside of the train. I also now want to um, de-isolate the driver safety device by pressing Control and D. So that is now active and will go off, I think it's about every 30 to 40 seconds while I'm traveling, if I haven't touched the throttle or brake in that time. So now we've set up the unit ready for departure, let's just take another quick look outside and then depart out on our journey towards Preston. Departing away from Blackpool North, the starting speed limit here is 15 miles per hour, with just under three and a quarter miles to go to our first stop, which is Poulton Le Filed. Now the signal ahead is currently displaying a danger aspect. You can just see the home signal arm there, which is pointing horizontally, indicating a red signal. That signal is actually stuck, so I'm going to treat it as a failed signal. I'm really not quite sure why that is. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull up to the signal, stop, and then press tab to request permission to pass the signal from the signaler. So let's just press tab now, and we've got request to, to pass signal at danger approved. So I can now close that box, and now I can drive forward. I'm now going to drive with caution until I can see the next signal and know that for certain that the next signal is clear. Parting away here, the speed limit is of course still 15 miles per hour until we get a further increase in the speed limit. Not too long before we reach the next signal, at which point the speed limit will be going up to 70 miles per hour. Now we've reached 15 miles per hour, I've shut off the power to allow the train to coast. Now I'm just going to allow the train to coast until we're able to accelerate further. The speed limit is increasing to 70 miles per hour at this speed post, but I'm not going to accelerate for a moment until I can see that the next signal is clear. Of course, I know it will be um, because I've already driven this journey. I'm trying to drive this as a real driver would, and I can now just see the semaphore arm ahead and see that it is pointing upwards at a diagonal angle, which means that the signal is clear and we can now accelerate up towards line speed. Just on our left here, we're passing Blackpool North carriage sidings. We're now coming up on Leighton Station with two miles to go.
have now reached the warning for an upcoming 35 mile per hour speed restriction, which is two thirds of a mile from the limit itself. I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment, just after this second crossing that we crossed just here. So I'm now making a step two brake application to bring our speed down. The 35 mile per hour speed restriction comes into force just after the next distance signal that we pass. Just reducing the braking momentarily as we're slowing down just a little bit too early. And we're now down to 35 in time. At the 35 mile per hour speed post there, we've got just under half a mile to go to an upcoming 20 mile per hour speed restriction. I'm just going to allow the train to coast along here until I need to brake for the upcoming 20. I'm going to apply the brakes for that limit as we approach the upcoming home signal. braking for the upcoming 20, we just passed the home signal there and the 20 mile per hour speed post will be appearing in a moment. And so that's the post just there, we're now down to 20 in time, I'm just going to allow the train to coast here, we're now coming up on the platform at Poulton Lee Filed. Um, so we're almost in the position to break for our stop. I couldn't see a clear stopping marker here, so I'm aiming to stop around halfway along the platform towards the end of the platform roof. The speed limit just here is also going up to 50 miles per hour. Uh, we just passed the 50 mile per hour post, which is in the old yellow type sign, which is more difficult to read, just as we entered the platform here. So hopefully this should be roughly the correct stopping point. Departing away from Poulton Lee Filed, the speed limit here is currently 50 miles per hour, with around 14 and a half miles to go to our next and final stop, which is Preston. The speed limit here is now increasing to 70 miles per hour.
as we reach 70 miles per hour. I'm now going to cut the power back to notch three, which should pretty much hold us at this speed. After this video, I'm hoping that the next video will be on the Morris Town Line, uh, part of the New Jersey Transit area, which will be my first American video for quite some time. And then following on from that, I'm not exactly sure which videos to do next. I'm still trying to plan out a release schedule. But I certainly want to do quite a lot more videos this month than I have done in the past. I've got quite a lot of free time right now. So I think it's uh, really good to make use of my free time by trying to build this channel further. As already mentioned, I am still working on the script for a Great Eastern Mainline Route Guide, which I'm hoping will prove to be a very popular video and also a very detailed video, um, probably the most detailed route guide documentary that I've made so far. I'm also looking into trying to make some more train guides as it's been quite a while since I've done one of those. So I'm trying to decide which trains to cover for uh, some upcoming train guide videos. Uh, but certainly I'm hoping that towards the end of this year there'll be more videos than I've made already this year. Um, so that should hopefully give you something to watch for the foreseeable future. What I'm looking out for along here now is a warning for an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed restriction. I'm going to apply the brakes as soon as we reach that warning to ensure that we're down to that speed limit in time. just reached the warning for the upcoming 40 limit there. I've now put the brakes straight into step two to bring our speed down. Speed's coming off quite nicely here, so we're now down to 50, 45, and I can just see the 40 board just coming up. So it slowed down quite well there, down to 40 miles per hour. The line from Blackpool South now joins us at this point and I think that Vulcan Productions are hoping to work on that in the future so that we've got the Blackpool South branch as well as the Blackpool North branch. just allowing the train to coast along here for a moment. We seem to be doing okay, not losing too much speed. Though if we get towards 35, then I will apply a little bit of power. Just to our right here is Kirkham and Wesham Station. So 
It has given us a couple of notches of power now as we were dropping towards 35 miles per hour. In a moment, once we've crossed the point to the right that will be joining the track on the right, uh, then the speed limit will immediately be going up to 75 miles per hour, which is of course the highest speed limit on this journey today. across the point and I can now go into full power to begin accelerating up towards the 75 mile per hour speed limit. approach 75 miles per hour. I need to go between notches 3 and 4 of power to try and maintain the speed here. And we're now coming up on Salwick station with five and a quarter miles to go. I'm looking out for now is an upcoming 35 mile per hour speed warning. Um, as we reach that, I'm going to idle the power. That's actually two thirds of a mile from the speed limit itself. And then I'm going to apply the brakes for that speed limit once we reach the next AWS round. Seems 
an invisible train has just passed us. <laughs> Fortunately, one of the bugs that can happen in train simulators sometimes. I know I've got everything installed for all of the stock required on this route. Um, but I just saw a coupling pass and not much else, unfortunately. As the road now joins us on the left, I know that we are now approaching the upcoming 35 mile per hour speed warning. So I'm just looking out for that now. all the power there as I saw the Morpeth board and I'm just looking out for the next signal in AWS and as already mentioned as soon as we reach that AWS ramp then I'm going to make a step two brake application. Unfortunately, I've noticed this route does seem to have a bit more lag than, than you'd uh, expect or hope, especially for a route this short, but uh, unfortunately there's very little I can do about that due to the way that uh, the train simulator engine works. So we're down to 35 miles per hour just before the speed post here. I'm now going to allow the train to coast for a moment, but as we enter the overhead wires in a moment, we're going to be going downhill just very briefly, a gradient of around 1 in 100, so I'm going to have to use the brakes just to ensure that we don't end up breaking the speed limits. So we're now just starting on this short downward grade. I'm going to brake to around 32, 33 miles an hour and now release the brakes and just allow the train to coast. At this point we're now joining the west coast main line and we're heading in a southerly direction. So to go in the opposite direction you'd be heading towards Glasgow Central. In this direction you're heading towards London Euston. Just applying some light braking here as I know that we are now getting close to the platform. Don't really want to enter the platform any faster than around 25 miles per hour. Again, here at Preston, I'm not sure where the stopping point would be for a train this short, but I do notice there's a footbridge towards this end of the platform, so I'm aiming to stop just a little bit beyond that footbridge. I also noticed that the building on the right has the dreaded missing texture bug and again I'm not sure why that is as I've got all of the assets uh, required to run this route installed um, but that does uh, tend to, well it does happen sometimes I've had a couple of routes where I've seen that before and so here we are, arrival at Preston Thank you very much for watching this um, rather shorter than usual route learning video. I do hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget that for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook. I've put the link to my Facebook page in the video description. If you'd like to sponsor this channel, then please visit my Patreon page with the link also in the video description. And finally, if you'd like to download and try this route for yourself, I will put a link in the video description to where you can download this route from. Once again, thank you for watching.